Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk, guys. Welcome back. It is Saturday morning and I am late. How is it that you're busier during a contagion? Is that, or maybe it's not busier, it's just everything takes more time. Is that it? Because you can't just zip down somewhere. Everything requires planning. You can't get all the things you want to do done in one day. So you have to kind of plan it out like a some kind of a war strategy, you know, some kind of a strategic war plan. All right, I'm going to go here, and then that's going to cost me an hour, and then, <laughs> holy cow, man. Hey, we have Johnny99, Johnny B. Good, and he's going to have a great game. He's going to have a great game. going to have a Radley Walters game. I'm going to check this out. So he's got a two, what is that, 63? Raging around, he sees him, and then he backs out. Now, he takes an interesting spot for a medium. You don't see mediums take this too much, but it's a pretty good hold down medium with a nice turret. It's not a bad spot, and it gives him some flexibility to move around. Now, where he isn't is over on the west side, and you're going to see the west side have a bit of an issue. So you can already see it develop. They have already pushed a scout up underneath. The green scouts don't seem interested in trying to counter the 1390. The 1390 is busy lighting everybody in sight, and only bad things are going on. But Johnny is down here working. He gets a shot into the IS-32, does a nice job of tracking him. Waits till he's reloaded, comes out, maybe just a little early on the poke. Now, Johnny has a really good game here. We're going to talk a couple times about mistakes because even in your best games, you're going to have mistakes. And if you're honest with yourself, you can learn from those. And sometimes, sometimes you can learn more from the mistakes in your good games because often they're small things or they're big and you really had to work to overcome them. Now, sometimes you make a big mistake and a total loss and you're not able to work to overcome them, right? So I know I've covered a lot of territory there, but the point being is we make mistakes in every game we play, whether they're great or really bad, and we can learn from all of those. Not to take anything away from a good game, which this is definitely going to be. So Johnny sees, and here's what I really like while I was talking. Comes to the corner, works on the ice 3-2, did a nice job tracking him, came out, tried to get him again. I think you, just, you poked a little early. We're going to get a little nitnoid on a couple of these things here, Johnny. Uh, not because I think they're massive things you have to fix. It's just little mistakes we can we can look at. 263 makes a move. The T30 comes up, and Johnny's already on the move. And that's what's really nice about a medium tank like this that hits hard. Finds the artillery. Bye bye Angel gets its wings. Fantastic. Relatively quick reload. Oh, he went to... Oh, he went back. Did he shoot HE? I think he did. <laughs> he shot HE. Goes ahead and sticks one there into the 263. T30 comes around the corner, finishes him off, double tap, gang bang, whatever you want to call it, and we got the 263 out, and we're in pretty good shape. <clears throat> now, the Southwest has a problem. Definitely has a problem. In a medium tank like Johnny's driving, not a huge deal to get back. So hopefully he's got an eye on what's going on down there. Takes a poke at the IS-32 as he comes in, misses. That guy, I don't know if he was maybe... He's maybe trying to get his gun on. Maybe he was actually only had one shell reloaded when Johnny came around the corner based on shooting at these guys. Not really sure. He probably saw Johnny pushing in with the T-30 and was looking to uh, to hurt him. There's that problem down in the southwest. Now Johnny's moving around here. And he's going to go up here and try to take on these TDs. I'd be very careful about this kind of jump right here, man. Thank goodness he didn't take any damage. Good suspension on the old M48 Patton Tier 10 American Medium. Thank goodness you didn't eat a shot just driving around the corner, but these guys are a little further back. Now, there's two TDs back here, and the Southwest is continuing to have an issue. So an FV, that's bad enough. And then, oh, my goodness gracious. All right. <clears throat> so we've talked about this a lot with other people. The micro positioning within a position. See this really steep part of this hill? Over on the left over here is much flatter. You're going to have a lot better time poking them right there. Coming up over this part, got you hit. And then I'm inexplicably... We dual the FV and allow him to drop 622 on us. So I don't know if we uh, thought the FV had fired potentially right there or we were just trying to bait him, but we were really exposing a lot of tank. Had you been over here, and we're going to see you do it right after this once we figure this out. This is a bummer. That Taurus is going to get another shot. Thank goodness he gets into the turret and not the tracks. We fix him and come back, and then we shift left. I think had we done that from the very beginning, we may have saved ourselves at least one of those shots. And you can pretty much come up over here and work on this tortoise while being mostly protected from the FV, although I think the top of your turret is coming up and over. Another option is to swing around to the back here. And it looks like one, two, three, four, five of their tanks. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one missing. Looks like five of their tanks are over there. Two of them are here. Four, five, six, seven. There's eight. So it looks like a couple missing. Let me do the, my math in public. That's seven. There we go, math. Yes, there's one missing. So he may be back there. Plus, there's the artillery to worry about. Maybe you're trying to cover up as much as you could with these buildings. But I might have shifted further left over there and seen if we can't get a, several different angles on these guys. Tortoise has, is forced to poke back into the corner. And now we're going to kind of duel the FV. And that's what I was talking about, which would have been a much better idea earlier. And you're going to be able to force a miss right there, which is really nice. Now, that FV is reloading. So just come up here, get comfortable. Shoot him in the hole. I think I would have probably tried to get another shot. I don't think he's got. I don't think he's got another one. Again, you kind of came up onto that higher piece. Stay on that little road part, and you wouldn't have exposed quite as much tank right there. But nice job to kind of taking a poke at the top of his of his turret there. I think we bait one more shot right here. Get a little bit lucky. It's like whoop. No. Nope. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, okay, so we do get hit. Actually, we did not bait. That was another shot coming on him. Maybe the artillery. So we eat another shot right there. And this is kind of what I'm talking about on prioritization and targets. I might have been working on the tortoise to get rid of him. So that then we can take this guy from three different angles. Right now we're fighting two guys with three, and that's great. But if we could have isolated the, the tortoise by coming over this way and shooting that guy a bit in that little top hatch, get rid of him. It would have been much easier to take on these, this FV. I think the mistake of coming up on that high part and eating the 600 and then maybe not isolating the the tortoise might have cost you two shots right there. At the very least, it certainly cost you one. And that's going to limit your options later. This is a nice little shot right through there, even with a broken gun. No opportunity to fix it until about right now. The artillery gets killed, but of course, the southwest has completely lost. We've got four kills, 2,900 damage. And ourselves and the 907 are headed back along with the 268. T30 is getting mauled by the 1390. And it was about here that I noticed while I was watching the replay that the name of the 907 from Clan Chai is Stat Paddington Bear. <laughs> All right, I don't care who you are. That was a good name. That is a good name. So we're going to talk a little bit about approach right here as well. You want to be careful with this. We, I have noted this on multiple replays lately, and sometimes you don't have a lot of time. You're at 15 seconds, so a lot of your options are gone right now. So you're really just kind of coming right at them. We'll talk about it. This is a nice job with the auto aim to take them down. We just really kind of have to sell out, come around the corner, so we can find one of these guys. Four seconds, three seconds. So that's all well and good. That's how we had to do it. Thank goodness the 907, it looks like, got the reset. There are two on there. Now, once we got the reset, I think I would have been on the edge of this ravine right here. If something saw me, I would dive out of the way. You are still working with only eight seconds, though, because we need to find one of these guys. There we go. Someone puts a hit on him. Reset. Now, the problem here is we're resetting the 140, which is fine, but he doesn't have a lot of cap points left. There we go. T49. Looks like the 13105 came off the cap. Maybe I'm not really sure. He must have come off, come off the cap as everyone was pushing in. Yes. I guess that, yeah, that must be what happened. Is that bush? I think that bush is right off the cap right there. And now the 268 realizes I'm just going to take my big gun and my relatively high hit points compared to everybody else. The 907 is dead. And I'm going to close the distance so that I do not get artied to death with a hold down hiding 430 spotting me and a T49 mobile artillery along with the Conquer which is on a reload right now, but he's starting to get close. Make sure you go two ways, which I think you figure that out. Er, there we go, brakes on. He sold out a little bit here. I think I would have just come right to the edge, because if that gun of his started swinging towards me, plus I'd have tried to track him. We do get a hit, and then right after that, the 268 takes him down, but you never know if the 268 bounced or missed or whatever. And then I certainly would not have been hiding behind this. I think you're trying to cover yourself from at least the 49, but the Conqueror is about reloaded, and thank goodness he goes after the 268 and doesn't just plop one on you where you're not moving. And we got six kills, 3,787 damage. Very nice. And it's just a matter of hunting the T49. So the 268 is hiding out behind this bush. Let's see what happens here, because I've watched this replay once, but I'm not really sure how he dies. 
I know who he dies to. What is he doing? Is he moving? He's starting to move, it looks like, yeah. So he's moving up through the buildings. We come up top. He's moving forward. There's no telling. The T-49 was last seen in the buildings down there. Looks like the 268 is going where he was, hoping that maybe he'll find him hanging out down there. All right, so when you're in a situation like this, especially if you've got a scout that's trying to hunt you down, try to stay together so that if you do get him lit, one of you dies, and you do have him lit, the other one has a chance so that I would have headed up towards this bush up here. Overwatch on the 268. Now, I know you're trying to look at more terrain right here, but let's think about this, and the T-49 just ends up getting the 268. And unfortunately, 268 does not spot him, but you may have got an idea based on the shot and how it came in, potentially. The problem with what you did is, now that you're both isolated, he was able to kill one of you without the other one having any chance. The other thing I don't like about this is you're coming out in the open here, and if he's in one of these bushes, you'll never see him. He's got a free shot on you. Now, clearly he's not, because he's in a bush where the, where the uh, 268 was. Good question. He asked him where. If you can get some kind of direction. He has no idea. Well, he's, well, there you go. Maybe he doesn't have his direction indicator for incoming shells on. Or he didn't notice it. That's too bad. And we come up to the bush. So this is where I would have gone before. I don't think it would have helped you because he got killed with a sniper. Except, it just came to me. I didn't really think about that till right now. You have better spotting. So depending on where he shot from, had you been on Overwatch, you may have actually spotted where that shot came from. Just lots of reasons why to kind of stay together. Not right next to each other, but work the same area of the map. You were in the same area, but you didn't have the same lines of sight. We don't see him, which is interesting. And then, huge mistake by the T-49. I mean, just absolutely awful mistake. Gets lit. You get lit. He's looking. He has a really long aim in time, and you drop him. Very nice. My question is, does an artillery shell come in? We're moving, we're moving. He may have shot at the 268. Yep, there it is. So, he was not really aimed in near you, probably. And that was not a well-aimed shot, even as the Conqueror has a huge dispersion circle anyway. And nice job moving. That was your best bet right there. Just keep kind of zigging and zagging. Any left or right movement you can put on the artillery, making them shift in azimuth, is going to decrease their accuracy much more than forward or back. Now, you don't know where he is in the map, but it's a good guess he's in the back back there. So any, in this case, right or left East or west movement is probably about the best you're going to get as far as trying to spoil his aim. Now he's got to reload. One thing I'll do on the, these cases is when I see the shot come in, I'll look at the clock and then I'll add 40 seconds and that'll be the time when I know he's reloaded. More than likely, based on the time it took you to move in, he's probably going to be reloaded. There he is, full hit points. Ooh, going right at him. Oh, a ricochet. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, no, we're zigging. All right. Look, oops. Holy cow, what have I done? I've hit V. <clears throat> this is interesting because I, I think I would have dove for the buildings. But that might have been a bad idea. Because it, the splash on it, say he hit one of them. I mean, he may have hit one of these closer ones because it's really a low arc from where he is, how close you guys are. He missed by a mile, which is very nice. Kind of forced his shot right there. I don't know if he was already moving back when he shot or what happened. You got through it. I think I would have dove for the buildings. But the problem with that is he might not have shot. <laughs> he might not have shot. It's very interesting. But he would have backed out, and you probably could have snuck through the buildings and maybe found a bush and, and sussed him out. But as, as it stands, he missed, so thank goodness. We're going to come on in here, and we've got another angel about to get their wings. Oh, that's a big angel too because that's a tier 10 arty. You gotta love that, guys. You gotta love the tier 10 arty being killed. Eight kills. Radley Walters, 4,420 damage, 331 assist. Really great game, Johnny. Johnny, be good. Thanks for sending that in. I do appreciate it. Well done on that one. As far as pointing out the mistakes or what I thought were the mistakes, discussion points, right? Take a look at them. Everybody else, take a look at them. Go, okay, I think probably in this case we could have done this a little bit better. Here's a couple of those points where we could have done it. Maybe kept some of our hit points along the way. I really think, at the end of the day, it was a really well-played game. 
I really think you could have saved yourself from at least one of those FB hits. So that would have been an extra 500 hit points in there. The rest of it seemed pretty reasonable on, on what you were doing in, at the time and the risk you were taking. But those two kind of pokes where you where you were dueling with the FV and, and not taking down the, the, the tortoise, I think you really had an opportunity there. The, the biggest, most solid opportunity for improvement was to not eat one of those two shots right there. Otherwise, fantastic game. Thanks for sending it in, guys. Guys, thanks, everyone, for sending in Johnny's replay. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well out there, staying safe, staying uh, well. I guess staying safe is not as good as saying stay well. Stay well, my friends, and we will see you. At some point, I'll figure out how to turn this thing off. Oh, here we go.